Welcome back to Learn With A Classic and part two of how to clean and detail your SU carbs. If you missed the first part where I show you how to take the carb apart for cleaning, I'll put a link to up above and down below so you can check that out. Also, if you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope that you stuck around and consider subscribing. I put new videos every week on some great classic car and Jaguar related content. So you can navigate to my channel down below, check out some of my previous videos. And if you like them and while you're down there, hit that subscribe button and the bell notification and you won't miss any future videos. So today I'm gonna to show you basically exactly where the last video left off. So I have the carb in parts. I have it in a little plastic container and I'm gonna start cleaning off all the old dirt and grime off the carb. Get them looking really nice, assess the parts. And if everything looks good, we're gonna to get to some cleaning and some polishing later in this video. Get those top dash pots looking really shiny so you can basically see your own reflection in them and just making everything look really nice. Like I mentioned before, this is not a concourse example. I'm not going for a perfect result. I'm also not going for the exact original result of how the cars came out of the factory. I'm going for a polished look, but not overly polished because it will just be for a daily driver. Also, I will be using tools that are pretty readily available. If you have a workshop at home, I won't be using any specialist tools or any really expensive tools. So a lot of this can be done by anyone at home. Exactly like everything I'm doing on this car, that British Racing Green 1975 XJ6. It's a home restoration and I'm just doing everything that you can do at home. So if you have a set of carbs or a carb, you can definitely follow along and get yours looking like these or similar if you want to. So let's head over to the workbench and check out the carb and start cleaning. Here are some of the components of the SU carb laid out that we took apart in the last video. Now I'm gonna clean them and polish some of the parts. So some parts will be polished a lot, like the top of the carb I'm gonna polish. I'm gonna polish the float chamber and the top of that. And the main body, I'm just gonna clean up and make it look really nice, not really gonna polish it to a shine. All of this is individual choice. You can choose how far you wanna go with this. If you wanna have an end result, like this one here, which I think is really nice for a driver, and you can even have this for show quality, or you can go even further and polish everything and have it look really, really amazing or you can just clean it off and go for a more natural uh, factory look. So it's all up to you, but this is what I'm gonna do with these carbs. Fortunately, I don't have access to um, a part cleaner. I don't have access to a bead blast or anything, so that would make it a lot easier. But most of you guys at home don't have access to that either, so this is how you can do it at home with some pretty simple tools. So clean everything off. I got some just normal engine degreaser here and a brush to brush it on and get into all these little crevices here. Then there's a lot of scratches, let's see, on this one. So we're gonna sand those off and with various grits of sandpaper, just starting with some 400, uh, going up into a little bit finer, like 800, and finally 1200, maybe all the way up to 2000. Then we're gonna polish with two different compounds and the polishing wheel. Then I also have some metal polish and a toothbrush to be able to get in and polish in places where you can't really get into with any tools. Uh, like here on top of the float chamber, polishing around there, cleaning up. Just normal metal polish works really, really well for that. So now I'm gonna start by just soaking all of this in some degreaser, getting that to work in there with a brush, and then we'll go from there. I'm gonna start off with the three dirtiest components here. The main body of the carb, top of the float chamber, which is really dirty. You can't even really see the text in there. And the float chamber. I'm just gonna get some degreaser, spray it all over there. You can use carb cleaner or engine degreaser. Even brake clean works for this. Then I just like to get some type of brush and work it in, because then you can let it sit on the surface a lot longer. We'll have to use less of the product and it just works a lot better. So I'm going to continue cleaning and brushing this in. After a while you can also switch to a little bit of a harder brush. You want to really get all the dirt out everywhere. So 
So I'm going to continue doing that now and I'll get back to you guys when these look a lot nicer and cleaner. Now everything's a lot cleaner. You can see it got all the dirt off, all the old grease and grime in here, up here and everywhere, so that just looks really nice now. I also cleaned the inside of it so it's nice and clean in there. This is also nice and clean. Now you can see the letters on the top of here, the SU Carburetor Company. That looks nice. I also cleaned off the piston a bit but really carefully just with a rag and some carb cleaner because the finely machined surface, you don't want to damage that. So that's nice and clean and can be used again. And I just wiped this down a little bit, but it's still kind of dirty, but I'm gonna get to this later on in the video. So now what I like to do is, if you have a look at the other carb I've done, I polished the dash pot a lot, I polished this, not as much as the dash pot, but I polished that a bit. Polish the top here as well. And then the whole carb body, I've just polished lightly, lightly by hand, a little bit with a toothbrush and some metal polish, but not much more than cleaning it off, really. So that's how I like to do them. So you can choose now how much you want to clean off or how much you want to polish one of these. Because you can just clean this off a bit and put it back together and it's going to be a lot better than before. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this with some compound and with a buffing wheel, clean this off, lightly polish that off, do the same with the top here. So let's head over to my buffing wheel and I'll show you how to do that. So I have a nice soft buffing wheel here. First I'm going to load it up with this brown compound which is the pre-cutting and cleaning compound. When that's all done I'll load it up with this light blue one which is a polishing compound. Just work this back and forth until I'm happy with the results. So I'm going to turn on the machine, load it up with some compound. And start cleaning off the area. A few moments later and it's starting to look really nice. It's all cleaned off now. It's not going to get any more shiny with that compound. Just basically clean off the surface corrosion and dirt. So now I'm going to switch over to the other compound, which is the polishing one. Make this look really nice and shiny. So, same procedure. You load it up onto the machine. And you start polishing. And you can already see how much shinier it's gotten there. So I'm gonna finish off this whole thing now and then I'll show you the results. It's been a little while later and now the float chamber's all done. I think it looks really nice. Really happy with how it turned out. When I polished most of the main part of the chamber, I took the top and I screwed it on and then I polished up here as well. I polished all the screws a little bit as well. Not overdoing anything, just a little bit so it looks a little nicer. And up here, a lot of this will be covered with the hoses, but still nice if you can read the text, the SU Carburetor Company of Birmingham. I think that looks really nice, very happy with that, so I'll set that to the side, it's all ready to go back on. So now we've finished that, I'm done with the main body of the carburetor. Now it's on to the part you get to see the most, the dash pot, and the part that's in the worst shape. Might not have been the dirtiest part, but there's all these scratches here and a lot of other things. So how am I going to get rid of this? Well, first I'm going to have to sand it a bit. I can't just polish on this. Well, I can, but there's no way I get rid of all these scratches. And there's probably be some nicks and chunks gone somewhere. So we'll need to sand it a bit. In order to do that, I'm going to use a threaded piece of rod. 
few washers, and a few nuts. The size rod that you use depends on which size carburetor you have. This is an HS8, and I found that this is a 10 millimeter rod. It fits pretty well in there. So it goes through the middle, fits perfectly in there. Put the washer down, and I'll screw down this locking nut here. Carefully making sure it's completely centered. And I'm gonna tighten it pretty tight. Not too tight, you don't wanna crack anything. Once again, these are pretty fragile. So you might be asking yourself, what's the reason for the threaded rod? Well, first of all, something nice to hold on to while you're polishing it. So imagine here, you have your polishing wheel. Here, it's nice to have something to hold on to. Make sure that's all the way centered and then tighten it. Of course, not too tight. You don't want to crack anything, but make sure it's on there tight and it's perfectly centered. So now you might be asking yourself, well, why have I put it on a threaded rod? Well, there's two reasons. One of them is something nice to hold on to when I'm polishing later. So imagine the wheel going here, then I can hold on to it. Also, now it can mount it on a drill. So I'm going to go do that, mount this on a drill. Then they can use sandpaper and get rid of all these scratches and all this oxidation here along the side. As you can see, I've mounted it on my drill here. Now I'm going to use various types of sandpaper to get a nice finish that I can lay the buff on. There will be a few scratches like here that we'll have to get rid of. What I'm going to do first is use this sandpaper. It's 400 grit. Just basically clean off everything. Then I can take it off and I can really see where some of the major scratches are and I can get those with a little bit coarser sandpaper. And then I'm going to work my way down finer and finer sandpaper all the way down until about 2000 grit, wet and dry. When I'm happy with that result, then I can start polishing. So start with the 400 here, let's see how it cleans up. Alright, let's have a look. It's already cleaned it off quite well, but like I thought, there's some really deep scratches. These dash pots are pretty bad. Really deep scratch there, one over there, lots going down here, and some over here. But now I can see them more clearly. I'll take it off here and I'm sticking in my bench vise, and I'll use a little bit coarser sandpaper and try and get some of these out. Now you can more easily see all the marks and scratches. There's some pretty deep ones over here, over here, and down here as well. So I'm going to have to sand those down to get it all nice and flat. Otherwise I won't get a nice mirror finish when I polish them. So grab a little bit of coarser sandpaper and just sand everything down. These dash pods are in pretty terrible shape, I have to say, but you can get them nice. So. If I can get these nice, then you can definitely get yours nice and shiny as well. So I'm just going to start sanding down all the different spots. Not taking off too much, but just enough to get rid of any of the marks. Might look pretty terrible now, but I've got all the deep scratches and all the deep grooves out of it. I said it was really really bad. I had to go all the way down to 100 grit paper and be really aggressive to get some of it out. But now's the next problem, getting all of these scratches out. A lot of them. So I gotta put this thing back on the drill. Start with, well I had 100 so I'll go up to about 200 and just keep going, going up, up, all the way up to 2000. Then this should be nice and smooth again and ready to polish. This is how they turned out after all that sanding. So the last one was 2000 wet and dry. And they're actually not as scratched as it looks. This is just dirt left on them. But they don't look that bad at all considering how bad they were before. They were some of the worst I've seen. Just, I don't know what they've done to these cars before, but I think you're gonna polish up really nicely now. So I'm gonna load up the wheel with that brown polishing compound again. And we'll see how nice these will turn out. Going gently back and forth. No real pressure. And wow, I can already see a difference. So 
I'm going to continue working this back and forth for a while and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done with the brown compound. Here's the result after the first compound. Looks really nice and shiny and it cleaned up very very nicely. You can hardly see any scratches or anything but I want it to be even shinier so I've switched to a softer buffing wheel. I'm going to switch to a polishing compound and try and get these really shiny. <laughs> Here's the result. Not sure how well it's actually showing up on camera because I think it looks even shinier in real life than it actually does on camera. It looks beautiful. Very happy with the results. Yes, it's not perfect. There are a few little marks here, but I didn't want to sand down too far. These dash pots were, it looked like they were almost beaten at some point and how bad they were. So I'm very happy that they turned out this nicely. Hopefully if you're doing this to yours, yours hasn't been as uh, scratched up as mine and you have a better chance of getting them even nicer. But I'm extremely happy with the result for these, especially for a driver. So I'm going to assemble that carb and I'll lay them both next to each other and we'll get to look at both carbs, how they look when they're fully polished. And here are both of the finished carbs next to each other and don't they look great? Just look at that finish. I mean, if you have to, you could shave yourself and the reflection, they're just beautiful. And now you can actually read the text up there on top of the float chambers. Everything is nice and clean. Of course there is a lot more that you can do. You can polish everything a lot more. You can bead blast things and get it looking even nicer. You can replate some of the linkage. Fortunately I don't have any of the equipment to do any plating. And as you know, everything on this car is things you should be able to do at home. And I think this is definitely very doable at home to get this kind of result. And these are carbs they would not be ashamed of at all. Imagine popping the hood at some car show or cars and coffee and showing off these beautiful SU carbs. I think a lot of people would find them really nice and be impressed that you clean them up this nicely at home. Can't wait to fit them to the car now. I'm just can't stop looking at them. I think they look just fantastic. And that's it for this episode. And wow, I'm really happy with the results. I think they look fantastic. I can't wait to put them on the car. So the next thing I will do will be SU carbs. The next time you'll see these carbs, they'll be on the car and they'll be ready to start up. So you'll see them during the first startup. And then once the engine has run in a bit, we're going to tune them and I'll show you how to properly tune SU carbs, how to balance them because they both need to be the same and how to get the mixture just right. So that will be a future video coming up pretty soon. So if you like this video, please hit that like button and share it with your friends. Until next time, I'm Adam and this was Lumufa Classic. I'll see you soon.